Yes, we are on the bed. You could call it an homage to old YouTube. I call it comfortable for my butt. <laughs> Conspiracy theories. So as somebody who's lost like many a night tumbling down Wikipedia rabbit holes, I, I love a good conspiracy theory. It's like, ooh, aliens. Ooh, how did people make such big triangles? I think that it's just fun imagining the world to be more interesting than what I was taught. But then something weird happened. A couple weeks ago, I found myself in the middle of a conspiracy theory. And then all of the fun was replaced with just pure confusion. The conspiracy itself is like weird and fun and innocuous. However, what I really cared about is like, how do you get to that point? How do you start seeing signs that were never there to begin with? That's what I want to know. And I also want to like disprove this whole conspiracy theory because it's why. However, as the person in, in the middle of all of this, I can imagine why I'd be seen as unreliable. So I'm calling on a friend. Uh, I don't know put this? How do you put this? Uh, people think that I am part of the Illuminati. Well, are you? <laughs> this is just one of the comments, but I think it really summarizes the issue. I find this channel to be highly disingenuous. Clearly a corporate product masked to have the appearance of an independently no run YouTube person channel. is that skill that animation, editing, Everything presenting, professional for that edited animation takes There's decades. No way this girl is that the one production did. company put this video together with you just as a host. So now, yeah. now now what why am i calling you right <laughs> yeah i'm like how do you want me to prove this i am wondering if you could explain to me and the viewers of this video how could somebody see something so mundane that's just like a part of my life i guess how could somebody yeah. see that and think like there must be more i'm interested i'm fascinated because i i'm like i'm not only interested in your conspiracy as interesting as it is i think conspiracies have a have a knack for especially nowadays to just just ruin people's lives, you know? I'm gonna solve this mystery. Scooby-dooby-doo. <laughs> we don't have the copyright on that. <laughs> We're going to investigate this conundrum. You're I'm, doubling I'm... down on it, I see. Hello, I'm Taha. I'm apparently Sabrina's only British friend. I've been given free reign over this part of the video, so welcome to my chaos. Sabrina's asked me to get into the mind of a Sabrina Cruz truther and figure out what's going on. Okay, hold on. Pictures. Let's read some conspiracy theories. This is a fake channel, a propaganda channel paid by others. Why the spotty uploads? Maybe because it's it's just one person? I love this one. Who do you work for? We all know this isn't your channel. Whose script are you reading? I think she works for the government. Oh, this is the best one. Her main channel is Crash Course with 10 million subs. John and Hank Green eat your heart out. Okay, so basically people think that Sabrina doesn't make her own videos, that she's a presenter, that maybe she works for the government. How did people get here? Let's figure it out. Okay, so here's what I found out. There are loads of ways to define conspiracy theories, but they all kind of boil down to the same thing. It's basically the belief that a group of people are secretly working together to do something bad. But here's the thing, when we talk about conspiracy theories, we aren't talking about every time anyone has ever got together to secretly do bad things. So what are people talking about when they say conspiracy theory or when they talk about conspiracy theories on the internet? They're talking about a specific type of conspiracy theory. It's the type of conspiracy theory that Sabrina's in the middle of right now. These conspiracy theories seem to be unlikely by design. Here's the really interesting thing that I found. These theories have pretty distinctive features that you can spot and these features make them not only unlikely to be true, but also difficult to argue against. These features are that they are speculative, based on educated or not so educated guesswork rather than solid evidence. The rationale being that if a conspiracy was successful, then it wouldn't have left a trace. They can become contrarian. They form in opposition to the obvious or official explanation. Conspiracy theories will dismiss this explanation, citing that's what they want you to think. Because of this, theories can become esoteric. If the obvious explanation isn't true and a theory is based on speculation, the conspiracy theory can run wild. Explanations can become increasingly detached from reality. Theories are also amateurish. Now, that isn't a comment on a theorist's intelligence. That's a comment on how qualified these theorists are. 
In most cases, they don't have the relevant expertise to be conclusively analysing evidence. Even when they do, they're in the small minority and the professional consensus doesn't agree with them. And is it more likely that all experts are lying or that most informed and qualified people are coming to the same conclusion? Conspiracies can also become pre-modern. These conspiracies believe that incredibly complex events can be controlled by a small number of people acting in secret. Nothing is a coincidence or a series of uncorrelated events, but a coordinated conspiracy. And lastly, these conspiracies are self-sealing. What this means is that the conspiracy is difficult to argue against. If a conspiracy is based on speculation, dismisses the obvious explanation in favour of a more obscure one, if it ignores expert consensus and believes that a small group of people can control complex events, any explanation against the conspiracy is just what they want you to think. Now that doesn't mean that every time you hear the words conspiracy theory you should just dismiss it, because we know that throughout history there are well documented conspiracies. I find this really interesting concept that distinguished between conspiracy theory and conspiracy fact. Essentially when you have a bunch of solid evidence that supports the fact that a conspiracy occurred, you can consider it fact, but it isn't sensible to believe conspiracy theories, the ones that tick all of the boxes that make them unbelievable. And not unbelievable in a way like, oh that's unbelievable, but in a way that's like, I don't believe you. And even if conspiracy theories aren't true, they still have a function. Not a good function, but still a function. So what is it? People believe conspiracies that reinforce their political or ideological bias. Nobody's believing a conspiracy theory that goes against what they think the world is like. We see patterns and theories that reinforce our ideology and we're happy to get on board. In this way, conspiracy theories are a type of ideological propaganda. By spreading the theory, you also end up spreading your own worldview. In order to believe a theory, you have to believe that the world is a certain way. So, by convincing people of your conspiracy theory, you are also implicitly convincing them that the world is the way that you believe it to be. Okay, so in the process of researching this video, I ended up going down a lot of conspiracy theory rabbit holes. Some of them I obviously knew were untrue, but others I thought maybe they could be true? That was kind of scary to me. And I wanted to find out what it was about conspiracy theories that made them so attractive. And that's when I got into the psychology of conspiracy theories. There are two key psychological phenomena that drive a natural inclination towards conspiracy theories. First is pattern perception. We're bad at recognising randomness. Instead, we are more likely to see a pattern when there is none. And secondly is agency detection. We tend to think that events occur due to agents acting intentionally, rather than recognising neutral or coincidental occurrences. These two phenomena are compounded by cognitive biases that make conspiracy theories believable. These include the proportionality bias, which leads to thinking that the cause of an event has to be as big as its consequences. When the explanation is not as grand as the event itself, people can find it difficult to believe. This means we assume things happen on purpose rather than by accident. When the conspiracy explains how something was intentional, believing that it was an accident becomes difficult. Confirmation bias means that once we believe a conspiracy, we tend to only pay attention to evidence that supports our conclusion. So now I know why my brain thinks the way it does, but that doesn't necessarily change the fact that I still felt like those conspiracy theories were true. So now what? Here's where it gets interesting. One of the books that I ended up reading for this video was written by a professor that I had last year at university, so I just asked him. This is Kasim Kassam, a professor of philosophy at the University of Warwick. His main research interests are knowledge, perception, intellectual vices, and conspiracy theories. I also owe him an essay. So yeah, my, my sort of like initial question that I, I didn't know how to tackle myself was just, how do you think about being healthily sceptical versus sort of unnecessarily conspiratorial. Right. I think that lots of people who believe conspiracy theories think that it's a good way to express their scepticism and lack of trust in government and authority. My own view is that, is that, well, of course, it's a very good thing to hold the establishment to account. And it's very helpful when journalists and whistleblowers come up with evidence. I mean, I have to concede that, that, that the sources that I regard as trustworthy are, of course, sources that to some extent tell me the things I want to hear. It's very easy to get sucked into the vortex. You know, so a question to ask yourself, you know, with respect to your own favorite conspiracy theories is that, well, what would convince you that your theory is false? It, would anything convince you 
that your theory is false. You know, if the answer is that, well, actually, whatever anybody comes up with, you're going to stick to your guns, you're going to continue to say there was a conspiracy. Well, then then that's the point at which you really need to kind of, you know, you know, pull, you know, pull yourself out, you know, but human beings are fallible, right? We all make mistakes, you know, we're all subject to biases and of, 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 various, of various kinds and wishful thinking. The recommendation I would make is just be aware of that, be aware of these failings of people, of human beings in general, including ourselves. Hello, different angle. Um, yeah, basically, I was so stressed trying to interview my professor and sound intellectual that I completely forgot to record my thoughts straight after my interview. I I just lay down and, and took a nap. So yeah, I feel like I, I, I have a pretty good idea of how conspiracy theories are formed, how conspiracy theorists think about them and, and why we think about them. And I feel like I understand what's going on in Sabrina's comment section. So I guess the final thing to do is to call Sabrina back and, and tell her everything we found out. Hello, how's it going? Hello. What's it like I... being part of the government? Oh, are we doubling down on that? Is that what ended up happening? You're just now a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> the, the, the fact is that like people do, throughout history, conspire to do bad things. It's not like that's unheard of. But some of those things are like verifiably true. Like there's there's documented evidence, there's whistleblowers. Those can't be like put in the same bucket as, as a conspiracy theory in the traditional sense. You know, it's important to make that, that distinction. And then once you get into sort of the world of conspiracy theories, it's just a never ending bucket of chaos. The thing that I discovered, which you're gonna find very comforting. So if you're a hardcore conspiracy theorist, there's basically nothing you can say to them that they will will take on board because if you say anything against any of the conspiracies they believe, they'll just say that's what they want you to think. That's great. <laughs> Essentially, for whatever reason, it's more comfortable for them and the, the way that they think about the world to believe that you are sort of like part of the Illuminati, you know, a government mole, than it is to just believe that you are a talented person. And like, what are you supposed to do with that? My, my lecturer, he... He did talk about sort of like being conspiracy curious. He really emphasized the idea that um, a wise man proportions his beliefs to the evidence. And what he meant by that was essentially, you know, is there evidence that I can, you know, rely on to conclude the things that I want to conclude? Most people like myself are just conspiracy curious. And now that I understand how conspiracies come about, I can really quickly spot when I'm falling into these biases. So just by learning about them, it's like really opened my eye into all of these ways that I can be biased and all of these ways that I'm vulnerable to conspiracy thinking. Well, that's a good lesson. Thumbs up. Thanks, friend. Oh, my phone landed on my ankle and it hurts so bad. That call was exactly what I expected and exactly what I didn't want to hear. I think what freaked me out the most is just like how easy it seems to be to fall for conspiracy theories and to think that our brain like develop these tricks presumably to help us survive is now something we need to actively fight against but you can't fight against it too hard or else you become extremely skeptical and believe in nothing it's just so hard and maybe the easiest thing to do at least in my case in my very innocuous little conspiracy theory case is to make them True. Dun dun dun. What could she possibly mean? I'll explain next week. Uh, but either way, have a lovely day. Please don't become a conspiracy theorist. Take care of yourself and your little brain. Bye.